Boom! What's going on, everyone? I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Steel, founder of Advantage Diecast, welcoming you to the warehouse on another episode of Toy Talk. J.W. Ringsby, better known as Bill, founded Ringsby Freight System in 1928 with just one truck, a Rio Speedwagon. He first started out hauling coal around the Denver, Colorado area. From these humble beginnings, the line grew in scope and in size. Much of the company's growth was attributed to numerous acquisitions. The ICC, or Interstate Commerce Commission, regulations of the times made acquiring new territory very hard and very expensive. So rather than go the hard route, most carriers just purchased their competition when they wanted to move into new territory. At their peak, Ringsby operated 43 terminals in 26 different states. And by 1981, the fleet had grown to over 6,000 trucks. Today, though, Ringsby Freight System is just another fallen flag. And I've got a checklist picturing DCP by First Gears Fallen Flags 164 Scale Truck Series. Grab your copy at that link down in the description below. In 1969, Ringsby purchased United Buckingham and Norwalk Trucking Companies for almost $14 million. United Buckingham and Norwalk were both losing money at the time. <laughs> Talk about great prospects to buy. After the acquisition, Ringsby quickly began losing money for the first time in 28 years of profitable operation. As a way to shore up the losses, Bill looked to the unions for help. He wanted some wage reductions and more flexible work rules. Imagine that, the unions balked and no agreement was reached. In 1976, the unions then went on strike. This is believed to be the longest strike against a major carrier in the history of the trucking industry. It lasted three long years. When it ended, Ringsby struggled financially for the rest of its life. Though it did manage to break even in 1981. But it wasn't enough to save the company. And in 1984, Ringsby Freight System shuttered its doors for good. I mentioned the ICC earlier the Interstate Commerce Commission. Today we have the Federal Motor Carrier Administration, but back then it was known as the Interstate Commerce Commission and it regulated the trucks. The regulations on the trucking industry coming out of the ICC back then had two main purposes. First, they were trying to make sure no carrier took too much of the market. And second, which is probably the more important one, they were meant to curb the losses that the railroads were incurring due to the growth of the trucking industry. There's probably lots and lots of truth in that because trucks can move some goods far more efficiently than the railroads can. Many of the regulations the ICC had imposed on the trucking companies had to do with their operating authority. Basically, that means where each company was legally allowed to operate. I'll get to Ringsby's operating authority a little later on. Other regulations the ICC imposed on the trucking industry had to do with physical limitations on the trucks using the U.S. highway system. These limitations forced the trucking companies to get very creative. And Ringsby, they were no exception to this rule. Ringsby Freight System, they were a big Peterbilt operator. And to get around the ICC, 
Ringsby had some extremely unusual trucks made by Peterbilt. Like this twin steer, Pete 352, cab over with a really long wheelbase and a huge dromedary box mounted on the frame. This truck even had a tiny sleeper perched atop the cab instead of behind the cab to maximize freight carrying space. But most of their trucks were far more conventional, like the Pete 351 that First Gear made in their Fallen Flag series. And here we go, guys. This is First Gear's Peterbilt 351 with 40 foot vintage dry van for Ringsby. It comes in First Gear's box. It's part of their Fallen Flag series, and this was made back before the merger between First Gear and DCP. And there you go. You can see it says it's part of the Fallen Flags. It's 60 0413. And it comes in their First Gear box, which has an actual window plastic in it, a two piece blister, and a nice little mural on the inside. Pretty nice. The two-piece blister is also taped together. Now, I know some guys out there don't exactly appreciate the tape on them. They wish they wouldn't, but I really appreciate it because it doesn't allow it to fall apart just like that. And if you ever had one slip open, you'll really appreciate the tape. Now, let's set the trailer out and then set the tractor out. Now, being first gear, it didn't actually come with an extra set of mirrors. First gear simply didn't give us an extra set of mirrors to go with their trucks. So back, and then let's start off with a trailer. This is first gear's 40-foot die-cast trailer. Not the biggest fan of this trailer, and I'm kind of glad that they decided that they're basically going to phase it out. However... I did like the lack of working suspension on this trailer because it doesn't droop or sag one way or the other. This one here actually runs on 10 hole black painted wheels with a nice vintage tread pattern tire. And you can see that beautiful, beautiful Ringsby graphic pointing forward there, the rocket. And then the Ringsby with all its numbers and everything right there on the trailer. Really cool. It has a orange marker light in the front and a red marker light in the back trailers die cast the base is plastic though this base is silver whereas the other one where some of them have been other colors you can see the spare tire with the spare tire wheel right there and the rim on your rear axles it has spring suspension with little air brake canisters and you can see the landing gear now this landing gear is plastic and it doesn't come down like the DCPs do. It just stays in place. So if this trailer sits by itself, it kind of droops. I'll show you here in a minute. There's also a date tampo there of 15918. So this was made on the 159th day of 2018. However, they did a really nice job. Only thing that's really wrong with it is it should have been about three-eighths to half inch taller but that's all right it does not have rear opening doors the hinges and the cam locks and latches mechanisms were not tampoed any other color because the trailer is already silver you can see the nice ringsby freight system graphics there a trailer number of 319 roof marker lights are up there and then you got your two brake lights tampoed red Mud flaps are just plain black plastic. We'll get around to this side. It's got the Ringsby graphic and the rockets pointing forward. And then it's got the Ringsby numbers there. Marker lights, front and rear. Ooh. Let me go back. Yep. They're orange, orange, orange. And... Then we got the 10 hole black wheels with the nice vintage tread pattern. Turn it up, you can see that tread pattern is really sharp. Top of the trailer is die cast metal and just painted silver. Front of the trailer has Ringsby system and the trailer number of 319. That is such a great place to put the 
trailer number and the company name because as you're driving along with all the trailers back to a dock, you can see which one's yours. Really good idea. Then there's that kingpin that's set up for DCP and first gear trailers. Now we'll set that trailer aside and talk about the truck. See how that trailer just kind of droops when it's sitting by itself? Oh well. If the landing gear had gone down, it would have been much easier, but I know why they did it, because they that's a little bit simpler to do. Now, what about that paint job? Black and orange. Great Halloween truck, eh? See the beautiful Ringsby uh, freight system graphics on the door? <laughs> the orange lettering is just the orange backing that they left clear and they painted the rest black. Really great how they can do that. Just amazes me. And then it's got the door handle and the door handle on the sleeper, the driver's door, and the toolbox doors are tampoed silver. The ring around the Peterbilt logo is silver. Red backing with silver lettering on the Peterbilt logo. Really nice. Chrome mirror, orange lube finer oil filter. This has the real short frame, which is more common from a 351. It's got the battery box step in black with diamond tread. And then the fuel tank is in black right under that 36-inch uh, sleeper. Also, you can see the 10-hole wheels with the vintage soft rubber tread pattern tires. Really nice. On the sides of the cat hood, you can see the latches for the butterfly style hood. This hood doesn't open because it's a butterfly style, and that would have been very, very hard to replicate in 64 scale. Turning it up on the roof, you can see it has five roof lights that are molded into the cab, a little bit of silver tampo, and then orange paint so it looks like it's got lenses. Classic, classic Peterbilt. A single air horn right in the center that's chrome plated. Then it's got a body matched orange visor. Also, you can see the hinge right down the center of the hood. Pretty cool. But the hood doesn't open. Oh well. There's a turn signal mounted on the fender, and the fenders are painted black on this truck. Round to the front, they painted the edges of the grill chrome. Um, they painted the edges of the grill black, and then the front is all chrome. The arms and the holders for the headlights are chrome, with individual jewel style headlights implanted into each of the uh, headlights. And then you've got your uh, tapered bumper that's painted black, red Peterbilt logo, the handle, solid uh, hard plastic front windshield that is a, mimics a two-piece design by putting a black tampoed bar down the center of it. Then they molded the windshield wipers onto the glass and tampoed them black. And then they tampoed a little black ring around it to make it look like it has a gasket. Inside it has black seats, black dash, black steering wheel. Really nice. They did a good job replicating this paint scheme. To this side, you can see how they moved the fuel tank forward and put the steps on it for the passenger. Definite Peterbilt trademark right there. Turn signal there on the black fender, the black wheels, little silver center caps on the front, but black caps on the other sides. Door handles are all tampoed, and then classic of the era, single stack here on the passenger side. I wish the stack was a little taller, but that's all right. This is what they made, and it has the um, heat shield detail. Is just a decal that they put around the muffler and tampo with little dots, black dots. Gets the job done. The air cleaner is here and it's orange with the orange pipe going into the hood. You can also see the straps for the butterfly hood. Really cool. Round to the back. Two little brake lights that are just red dots painted on the back of the frame, chrome brackets, and black mud flaps. Turning them up. Tire spacing is a little wide on the duals, but we can live with it. It should have been closer, but that's okay. Fifth wheel that'll haul any first gear or DCP trailer, and it pivots a little bit. Nice. Also, they pulled that black stripe right around the back of the sleeper there. See it? Cool. Now under the frame, white engine, chrome exhaust pipe going up to the muffler, 
black transmission, black drive shaft going to the brownie, and then a black drive shaft going over to the first axle, and then another drive shaft to the second axle, making this a true 351, not a 281, because 351s had two powered axles, 281s had one powered axle. No working suspension and no steering, but that means this truck will roll straight. The you ask me, the working suspension and the working steering is a little too much. It just makes the truck sit funky looking, in my opinion. But I know some guys like it. If you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know too. I'd really like to know your opinion on all that. Do you care if these things roll or steer or run straight or whatever? Just drop me a comment down below. Now let's go on and hook this guy up. And there it is. First gears, Peterbilt 351 with 36 inch sleeper and 40 foot vintage dry van trailer for Ringsby Freight Systems. Ringsby Freight System had operating authority in the 1950s from Denver all the way back east ending in Chicago. But with the clever use of some loopholes, they managed to extend their authority all the way to New York City. One such way that they extended their legal operating authority was to use a subterfuge practice known as trip leasing. Essentially, Ringsby put another company's name on their truck. For this ruse, it was often a company truck posing as an owner-operator's truck. Ringsby would then relinquish its operating authority on a per-run basis to this other company. Basically, Ringsby just rented their truck for a single run to another company. This got Ringsby and their freight moved on outside of Ringsby's legal operating authority. Now, isn't that pretty clever? Don't forget to grab your very own copy of my checklist of the DCP by First Gear Fallen Flag series with the link in the description down below. This little checklist will let you know which ones have been made and which ones you need to find to finish out your collection. Thanks everyone for watching. I release new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So please take a quick moment to tap that subscribe button and ring the bell next to it to get notified of all of my future videos. I truly appreciate each and every member of my YouTube family far more than I can ever express. Then go on and tap the like button to tell YouTube to send this video on out to other diecast collectors just like you. And finally, go on and tap the share button and send this video out to your social media followers because I know they will truly appreciate you thinking about them. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, closing up Advantage Diecasts Southside Warehouse Doors on another episode of Toy Talk.